Good afternoon, welcome to the shop. Um, this is an interesting little side project, kind of a Christmas present for my in-laws and for my wife. We're going to do a couple of uh, um, pepper mills and salt shakers. So just a matching set of salt and pepper mill. So the mill hardware is, oops, I just threw some. The mill hardware is sort of finicky and I wasn't entirely certain uh, how long the holes have to be and things like that. So I turned a prototype out of maple, which is ugly, but it doesn't need to be pretty. It's just there to get me the dim dimensions that I need to be concerned about. Um, and so I'm just working out, I, I built this basically that works out the, the rough uh, dimensions that are needed for this. Um, to get the holes the right depth and get everything functional. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna assemble this really fast and then I'll talk about it a little bit more. Okay, I should start out with, this is the first time I've ever done one. This was literally the first try, um, the prototype, um, to get all the depths and things. Um, so it's not great, I'm not an expert. I've literally made this. I'm not even gonna call this one, I'm gonna call this a half. Cause it's not pretty, it doesn't, I don't have any of the curves, anything like that. It's just all the dimensions in the linear length are configured for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start assembly here. In the there, just like that, nothing to it. <clears throat> now you've basically got a working grinder. You'll see that, and as I loosen this, the spring pulls everything forward and makes a coarser grind, make a finer grind, and the whole thing functions. So that's what we'll be new doing for real in Pretty Wood next. So. Okay, so we're going to turn this, the way the instructions showed it, is it basically sits in the lathe like this in your blank. So we start by drilling a bunch of the holes here, drilling the the big five, one and five eighths hole, and then the, it's supposed to be a one and sixteenth, but I've only got a one and an eighth, and it worked fine. And then you'll part this part off, and in the instructions, there's two methods. You can do a 10 in here, or you can do a 10 in here. I'm doing a 10 in here so that I can get things a little bit closer. The 10 on the other side makes me a little nervous about um, getting the, the lengths right. So the lengths on these, they're not critical, but there is a certain bit of You've got to have so much room so that the top is thin enough to allow the screw thring threads to come through, but also thick enough to catch, have that square plate catch the square chunk of the shaft here, but also have enough room for peppercorns and things inside. Um, so that's kind of where, we're are, where, where we'll start, is I'm going to get a blank set up so that I can turn it like this. And almost all of this gets turned in a chuck, but the first thing I have to do um, is get my blank. Okay, so I've just got this short chunk of, uh, it's actually English walnut and it's really curly and it should look pretty good once it's done. Um, the hope is to uh, make a pair so that the salt shaker looks the same. Um, so what I need to do first is I would put this right in my chuck, but my chuck jaws can't handle this size square. It's just too damn big. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get this between centers and I've got a dead cup center on this side. And this is typically how I turn most of the time because I like a dead cup center. Um, it's less impactful. If there's ever a catch when turning, I don't turn often enough that I'm not, I don't keep my skills as finely honed as I'd like. So having a cup center makes for catches that pretty much inevitably happen for me. Uh, make them, makes them less violent. All that happens is the wood simply stops and I can pull my chisel or tool out, whatever. Um, so that's what I use is I just have a cup center and I just have, I've marked my center points on the ends, put a little dip, dimple in there and I'm gonna use the tailstock to, uh, to push them together and hold the friction that will allow it to turn. All I have to do is just keep applying t t tailstock pressure. Um, so the, the reason I'm doing this between centers is I'm gonna turn a tendon on one end that will fit my chuck jaws. So I've got a, I've got a divider set. So when I'm in the right place, I'll I'll be able to just spin that uh, tenon so that it'll fit in the chuck. And then we'll do everything else from the chuck. So I'm going to get everything set up. And I am not going to do a turning lesson. I'm sorry. I'm not good enough at it anymore. I don't do it enough. I used to teach classes because 
there are far better educators than I to do that for you. You'll learn a lot more from them than, them than you will from me. So I'm just going to grab my parting tool here. Check everything is free spinning and I'm, yeah, okay. So I'm going to throw some music on and you're just going to watch the process here, okay? Okay, so we got our tenon. You can see this curly stuff tears a little easily, and I also jabbed my tail or my parting tool in, in a bad spot. So, since I've got it between centers, um, it's going to be easier to uh, rough this thing around now. So I'm going to do that. Um, so we're going to take my roughing tool now, the roughing gouge, just a, a one-inch roughing gouge, and I'm going to make this thing round now. Um, Okay, that'll work. That'll be a thing I can grab onto with the chuck now. So we're going to pop this thing out. Move the tailstock back here. And uh, there's our round bit. We're ready to uh, slap it in the chuck. But I'm Okay, so we're now we're ready to get one of these into the chuck here. And uh, just get it close to the diameter first. Oop, that was too far. Okay, we'll get them close, but it's in here really loose right now. I don't want it to be ready. I just want it sort of not falling out at the moment. Just like that. And then I'm going to bring the tailstock up here. And use it to help guide my centering. Like so. Now I can push that against my use the tailstock pressure to push it against the face of the jaws and then I can cinch it down good. Now I can pull the tailstock back, check that it spins nice and it looks like it's spinning really true. That's good. Next we'll get the tailstock set with the drill chuck in it. Okay so we've got our inch and five eighths Forstner bit chucked up here. We only have to go about a half inch deep which handily enough is about as tall as the, the uh, the ring of the, the the cutting area of this so it's pretty good all right so we're and I went a little deeper than a half because I need to face this front edge and I'll just face it here shortly in fact we'll do it right now Tailstock over here. Bring the tool rest over here. I'm just going to do a really tiny little scraping action. I'm actually going to uh, bring it in a little bit so it's kind of pointed diagonally like this instead of concave. I want to do it like this so that when you set it down on a table, this outer edge will sit pretty flat. I'm going to do that with my spindle gouge. All right, so we got our little depth gauge here. I just checked this. We're at right about half inch. We're a little bit deeper than a half. Just a tiny little bit deeper than a half. We're about probably less than a 60, less than a 30 second deeper. So that is fine. There's no major roughage or problem with that. So now we'll switch out our drill here for a one and an eighth diameter. All right, so we've got. Our bit is ready, it's an inch and an eighth, the same diameter as this. Um, and we've got our prototype, and we're gonna use that to get our final depth. So we'll just do like this. And this will be where we cut our depth to. And right now it's in metric, but it's about two and three quarters or so. Can you see that? About two and three quarters, a little bit over, a little bit under. So this is our gauge, and we just keep drilling at it until it's done. Um, there we go. 
go. And check the real depth here. See how close we are to our desired depth. We're very close. Actually, we have gone past just a tiny bit, it looks like. Not by much, though, so that's good. We're off maybe a 30-second deeper than we needed to be, which is not a problem. Okay. So we can use that to know here where our hole is. And so I'm just going to mark a pencil line right there because that's where I will put my parting tool. All right, so now we've got in our tailstock a live center. <clears throat> we've got our hole here. I'm gonna, I should probably blow that out a little bit, but it's good. Okay, and I've got this little cone-shaped dealy bob that is going to sit in here as a tailstock support for this end because, you know, it's five inches hanging out of there. It's not not a ton of space, but it's enough to be, you know, you want to be a little bit careful. So now I have that in there and I can just put a little bit of pressure on it. And now I've got tailstock support here. And I can mark where I want to do my part. Right there, I've got my pencil line where I was going to mark it. So we'll just get right where the line is and just mark it. That's where we want to part. Right there. We did. We managed to hit the hole we were aiming for, which is perfect. That is excellent, and it'll actually work as a tenon. <laughs> um, so that's good. Um, I'm going to flip it around. Actually, you know what? It got pretty straight and pretty smooth. I'm going to leave it. I am not going to mess with it. But that is our base now. And that should match at the height of our base here. Yep, they do match very, very closely. Incredibly closely. So that's good. Um, so that's part number one. Now we have a tenon we're going to make on here. And I think I'm going to take that one off. I want it to be a little bit of a bit more snug fit than that. And so we're going to take a little bit of the tenon off of that. And I'll bring you back. Turn the tenon, and now we have our we have our piece uh, uh, snugged up in the with the cone, and I've marked my line where the top will end. Um, I've got my grain lines matching up pretty well, and so we're gonna I'm gonna go after this as best we can with the uh, with the gouge and come up with a rough final shape. Um, I've got from a wall thickness standpoint, I've got a lot of meat I can take out of this area, and make this thing a little smaller, a little thinner in diameter. I've got a good quarter inch thick wall here, which is way more than we need for this end. Um, it might be cool up here, but you know, that kind of stuff. So we're just going to play around with curves. This is where I got one shot to uh, get the con contours the way I would like them. And so I'm going to start with my roughing gouge. I'll probably move into my spindle gouge here. Not too short, not too long after. Um, you know what? We're going to actually start with the spindle and we'll just uh, nope, we're going to do the roughing because I need to make it round first. So we're going to start by making everything round. And I'm taking light cuts because I'm kind of friction driving the base here. Um, I'm going to do a real quick marking part right at this line, right before this line. Actually, the the line itself is my part. And that just lets me know where my end is. Now I can come in here with a little reckless, more reckless abandon and really smooth all this out. Come in at just a little bit of a shear. Okay. Now we can start playing with shape. All right, so I'm going to come up with some shapes here. I've got my skew, and I'm a little out of practice, so I may get some skate. We'll see. You may learn how not to use a skew. 
Okay. And that should take care of... I actually really like that shape right now. Okay. And I think I'm going to put a tiny little bead on it here. So this will be right there. Just come in like that. Come in like that. And then I can come in here and hopefully, without drama, shape a little. I'm, I'm nervous. I gotta use my skew. Or no, my uh, spindle gouge. I can't do my skew with that one. Skew makes me scared. Yeah, they did it anyway. That's my final rough shape. This is pretty uh, threaded, so I'm gonna come at it with the old 80 grit gouge, I think, because I'm not that good with, a, with the small spindle gouge to do that. So we'll just come at it with some rougher, some coarse stuff here. little bit of tongue oil we're going to throw on here. I think I'm going to like this finish. We'll see. Turn it on and give it a little bit of, bit of the goop. This looks pretty nice. Try to get some down in that crease as well here. That's really good. I like that a lot. I'm not doing the top yet because I'm going to pull this out and then I can turn the top afterwards. Yeah, that looks great. I really like that. All right, so that is about enough uh, uh, the tongue oil on that. I'm going to pull this out now. We're done shaping the base. I'll pull that off with the finish. Ooh, it's jammed in there good, huh? Cool. There we go. Clear that of it. <sighs> yeah, and we're going to let that just chooch a bit. Fro and chooch. Okay, looks pretty good. Looks really good to me anyway. So for the rest of the top, the only thing I'm going to do before I pull it, part it off is I'm going to smooth and change this transition just a tiny bit so it's not Z, Z uh, reversing, so I'm literally just going to touch it just a tiny bit here. That's it. That's all I wanted to do was make it not have a little fillet of uh, wood sticking up there. There. Yeah, that'll do. Now, what I'll get set here is parting, and it is already parting where it's oh the other thing I need to do I forgot about that that's why I needed a center haha <laughs> I still have to drill a quarter inch hole through this forgot about that bit so we're gonna get configured to do such a thing right quick Okay, the other thing I'm going to do is set up to sand up sand up this side of it pretty good because I'm good with this face. I just want, need to fill the fix finish this end. So I'm going to sand up this this corner here real quick. We're going to 
Okay, now I get to part this thing off and uh, spin it around. And I think I may use, I may just do a jam chuck to finish that off, we'll see. Okay, so now we can part away. I'm gonna come in with my spindle gouge and get rid of some of this waste so I can continue to turn the top side of this thing. That's good enough for me to flip it around, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We're ready to ready to finish the parting here. There we go. And it didn't tear too badly, thankfully. Now we just have to uh, get this jammed on here. So we'll do that next. There we go. That is on. Cool. Haven't made a jam chuck in about four years, five years. So I'm glad that actually worked. Okay. Okay, so I popped it off the chuck there, off the jam chuck. We'll give it a little quick, small buffy thing, buffing. I'm going to put a little bit more here. Just to, it went, flew off the chuck pretty good, so I'm kind of on a repairing sort of bit. But yeah, you see we got our, our lid now, our top. And I think we're going to let this cure up tonight, and then we'll put it together and see how it works. Yeah, that's going to hold just fine. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to I'm going to see, I'm not sure if I can, but I thinned down some brushing lacquer quite a lot. <clears throat> and we're going to see if it will uh if it will lay down nicely on here or not. We will see you shortly with the airbrush. We'll see. All right, well, we've got our blanks cut for the salt shakers, and I'm basically making them about the same height as the, I'm trying to get them close so that they're complementary to one another, so they're about the same height as, uh, as the pepper ones are. Well, after turning the other two, the salt shakers, we've got ourselves our match set here. Pretty neat. That walnut looks really nice. Um, that lacquer is still quite sticky, so I'm going to leave it to assemble later. But for the most part, that's all turned and we're finished. Um, 